Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome back. Finally, an episode two of my new season where I'm converting my basement into a really cool man cave. And on today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make this awesome light up sign that I'm going to be hanging right outside my workshop. Now, if you're new to the channel, I do a lot with woodworking and a lot of different types of tools that you may not have access to or you don't want to buy just for something like this. And that's okay. At the end of this video, I'm going to show a much easier, budget-friendly method suitable for a broader audience. But nonetheless, I think you'll enjoy watching both of them come together. So let's get started. So for the front, I'm going to cut a piece of plexiglass that's 20 inches long by 5 inches tall. Luckily, with this material, I'm able to cut it with a saw instead of scoring it like regular glass. For the surrounding box, I'm going to use pine that's half an inch thick and trim the width to 4 inches. I'm cutting all the sides at a 45 degree angle. The sides will be 5 and 3 quarters long, while the top and the bottom will be 21 inches long. Next, I'm going to raise the blade to half an inch and cut a groove on the inside of the miters for the plexiglass to sit in. I'll have to do this twice on each piece since the blade isn't thick enough. The next step is optional but gives the front a much nicer look. I'm using a chamfer bit on my router to ease over the front edges where the plexiglass will sit. Next I'll trim a panel for the back from a piece of quarter inch plywood. This will be the same dimension as the box. So for the lettering you can easily use some of these stickers but the sizes and font choices are a little poor so I'm going to design it myself and then use a vinyl cutter to cut out the letters. To do this I'll first handle the typography in Photoshop. I'll then take that into the cutting program and set it to trace out the design. You don't necessarily need Photoshop to do this, but the cutting software isn't the easiest to get used to. It's just what came with the cutter, which is a silhouette portrait. Next, I'll place the letters on transfer paper and stick it to the plexiglass. You'll notice the word was cut in two parts, and I used the letter D twice to align it, and then I'll peel one of them off. Next, I'll hit it with bright red spray paint. To give it this cool aged look, I'll just spray more paint than what I actually need, which will cause a rough texture when it dries. Now I'm just carefully peeling off the letters, making sure not to peel off the paint as well. Next I'll sand it with 200 grit sandpaper, making sure not to take off too much paint, but just enough to even out the surface and reveal a bit of crackling. I'll sand the back as well to fog the glass. Afterwards, I'll clean it off with water and start assembling the box. I'm using a strap clamp to hold it all together while I pull out the sides and apply glue to the joints. After putting them back, I'll tighten it down while adjusting the alignment as the strap gets tighter. After the glue dries, I'll hit it with 80 grit sandpaper to even everything out. Once that's done, I'll hit the sides with the same router as before, and then smooth everything out by hand with 200 grit. Next, I'll start filing down a place for the wire to run outside of the box. Since I used pine, this doesn't take long at all to do. For the light, I'm using a 20 inch long USB powered light strip. I'll have a link in the description on where to buy one. Once I stick the LED strip to the bottom back part of the box, I can adhere the panel with wood glue and a few brad nails. The corners left over can be sanded by hand. Next, I'll thoroughly clean off all the dust and prep it for paint by masking the letters.
I'm using a standard black spray paint which will sand easily if there's any runs. Once it's dry, I can start adding a bit of age and character by sanding a few areas with 80 grit sandpaper. I'll then wipe it down with a damp rag and get out any dust and apply a satin wipe on poly to add a little bit of protection. Once that dries, I can measure out where I'm going to drill the holes for hanging. The holes will be a foot apart and one and a half inches from the top. This will make it very easy to hang because I'll just measure two points on the wall, make sure it's even, and then drive in a couple nails. All right, so there you have it, a very cool light up sign that can go pretty much any room in the house, say anything you want, it's very versatile. But as I promised earlier, I'm gonna go over a much easier solution that doesn't require as many tools and supplies. All right, so here's a few things I found at a local craft store. Uh, this is just a strand of fairy lights. Uh, it could fill up shadow boxes like this really easily. It's battery operated. You don't have to look for a place to plug it in. Just make sure you can access the, the on and off switch. But this is just a standard shadow box. It's eight by 10. You can get them bigger or smaller. Uh, but what's cool about these is you can take the back off of them, take the glass out, and that'll be perfect for when you use uh, a sheet of letter stickers like this to use as your mask. So just put the stickers on like I showed earlier, you know, spell out what you want, spray the glass while that dries spray the whole box assembly whatever color you'd like once everything dries you can put the glass back peel off the stickers you know put the lights in there put the back back on and then there you have it a much easier and budget-friendly solution suitable for all levels of craftiness so i hope you enjoyed the episode like comment share and please subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you next time thanks